Hey, Posing Gloves here, and today we're going to be continuing on our creating a chiptune track. And I actually don't think there's a ton that needs to be done here at the intro. Um, just a couple things to sort of tidy up the mood. But we will continue on that. Here's a preview of what we're going to do. Hey, all right, this is it. So this is going to be our playthrough. Um, this is the preview, and we're just going to play through. I'm going to show you what we have. We're not done yet. Obviously, have work to do, things to do. But I think we've reached a pretty nice uh, spot. Uh, this section right at the riser, the fill here, um, it cuts out suddenly. Not figured out why, but I, I decided to just move on. And we will figure it out another day. So without further ado, here's the playthrough of what we accomplished in this video. Okay, so that's where we're stopping. That's the end. But a really quick note, uh, there was a note that I held over that wasn't supposed to. All right. I do not know what I just showed you, but I anticipate me getting to some drums here. Uh, one of the things I want to do first, though, is add a little reverse cymbal. One of those. I think it would be quite nice. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and, and look for a cymbal sound. And so we have cymbals, uh, crash, and... Let's see... That one could work. Let's run with that one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the sampler. I don't think I've shown you this trick necessarily. I'm going to beat sync it. I'm going to say play back this thing in eight lines. And um, let's see how that sounds. I'm going to put it. I'm also going to come into the sampler. sampler select the whole thing. And I've never done this in the sampler. I want to do it. That's, that's what I wanted to do. Just reverse it. Cool. So we're going to go to eight lines, put a symbol there at C4 because that is the correct note. And then put an off command there. Yes, that is exactly what I want, except for it's at the wrong spot. So we're going to... And it's also, yeah, it's at the wrong spot. It's not got its own track. Let's put it on its own track. Put the C4 there. And I'm putting the off command because if you don't, I believe it'll keep looping. I'm not totally familiar with the what will happen. Reverse symbol. So we just reverse sample. Why not? With a period. To be extra defined. This would fall into a drums category, so I make it orange. And... Uh, let's see here. This should go here and not there. You should have used the control X command. And I want to add an EQ and a reverb. So we'll add an EQ. And you know, you can hit enter and it will start. It will make uh, the answer on the numeric keypad. It'll loop just these. I believe it's 16 lines. 
And so see there, so the reverb will tidy that up. So let's add the reverb first. It's just got some high end on it. I might want to just take that down a touch and just filter out the bottom stuff. Make it longer. change the width let's uh let's bring it down let's do something like this what would that sound like oh i have the sync on so it won't matter what put what pitch i pick anyways we have now added a beautiful little thing there Those I, in my beat series, that's actually a weaker transition, but I think it's called for here. So I'm going to run with that. That's what I feel inspired to do. And so we reached this riser. And then I want it to just turn off here. So I want a, a fill a fill pattern here. This is the, the fill. And the fill is going to be just 16 lines long. And so you can change the lines by coming up here and clicking. And so it's going to be our fill pattern. I'm going to add a new pattern after. And this will be our, let's go back up. This will be our drums. Our drums go here. Control S. And so on the fill, obviously, I want this stuff to turn off. I believe everything, nope. Well, this, uh... This doesn't, I don't really need to turn it off because it's, it's a pluck, so it'll just echo out. But I'll turn it off just to be safe. Up, uh, lead. Haha, -ha, nice try, lead. Okay, let's go up and down and play it. And then here. And then what I want to do here is recap our main intro. So we'll take these. Whoa, 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 whoa. Just copy and paste, man. Paste them down here. And um, I'm thinking about perhaps automating something like the five. So it's like more aggressive here. So I'm going to go to my sliders only and on graph five, I am moving the fifth band. So one, two, three, four, five. And I'm moving the, this is the Q, I believe. I want to move the DB. Where is the DB? No way. That's Q. So I want to move the slider. I believe this is the volume. Yeah, gain for five. So my gain is at some amount here. And I want to bring it up some. And let's, let's go back up here and dial it into what we want at the beginning. And it's going to draw a line. I don't want a line. I just want a point. And so this point is just going to set it at what I want. So now all my patterns will play at this level. And then when we get to this pattern over here, it'll play correct. This has taken me a while to get used to because in other programs, automation's a lot more straightforward. And Renoise is, is just not as straightforward, but it's still, it's, it's just got a different workflow with it. So I like that. Um, so let's go ahead and I'm gonna add in our drums now. And so I'm gonna call this one our kick sound. And I'll do some basic mixing and stuff but nothing anything crazy and i'm going to stay away from drum and bass uh, kick patterns i just want to be like boom, da, da, boom, da, da, boom, da, like one of those like a sort of a driving uh pattern uh we'll have a snare and then a hi-hat and normally i have two of these but we'll see what happens so i have said before i'm in the black octopus library um wicked drum hits because i'm really digging those for this sort of stuff so i'm going to go to kicks sharp new pattern, I mean new instrument. 
I like that. It's that simple. So let's go ahead and toss down a... And then I want my snare to... Oh, so I want to I want a hi-hat there. So we're going to go to my hi-hat. You hit tab to go over columns. I'm not... I'm used to the tab thing. I'm just not the biggest fan of it. Uh, snare's percussion. It's in percussion. I find that an interesting place to put it. Closed. That, that's what I'm looking for. Nice. Good job. Good job, Black Octopus. And now we'll go to snares. Kicks, snares here at the bottom. Snare drums. Nope. Yes, that's what I want. And I may have to just turn down the volume of some of this. And then hat. Now, these are samples I think should be renamed because they're horribly unintuitive if you look up here. Like, what is going on? So I name kick. This is the hat. This is the snare. So I didn't load them necessarily in the greatest of orders. Control C, Control V. Now let's keep it. I always have a tendency to overcomplicate freaking drum patterns when I start writing them. Just keep it simple for now. Put like, one more kick here. Simplicity, right? Okay. Um, let's see. Let's add a distortion to the lead. They have one called lead distortion, but I, I'm scared to touch it. I'm going to put it before the verb. Okay, and I'm going to automate that device active bypass. So at the beginning, obviously, I want it to be off. So it'll be off. And at pattern, what pattern am I on? Seven, I want it to be on. So we'll turn it on at pattern seven. And then I am going to add a second hat. So I'm going to hit control T to insert a new track and I'm going to name it uh, fast hat. I'm going to name it fast hat because it's going to be the hat that moves very fast. So we'll go to snares percussion again. Hats closed. Oh, you know what? I kind of like that one. So did I click that right one? No, I did not. That's what I wanted. Okay. So this one's going to have, this is a pretty common trick. I've shown it before. So 
So we're going to go 80, 40, 20. Hmm. 40, 30, why not? 80, 70. I just need a solid loop here. 50, 40, 60, 80. Okay. I'm gonna select this pattern by holding that control, I mean shift, alt, control C, control V. Actually, I could just, and then just control, P, I believe. Oh, you have to control copy. I figured out the continuous pasting. So you got to copy it first, obviously. Then you hit control P, continuously pasted. That was what I was doing wrong. I don't know what, well, I was thinking. I thought if you highlighted something, it would immediately do it, but you have to copy it and then you hit control P and it will continuously paste it for the rest of your pattern. Okay, so we have our, our drum feel but we lack um, power forward, right? Which is gonna be, we'll accomplish that by filling up the track a little bit more. So we will use our pad to create some big epic chords, right? Because now our pad's gonna be big. And I'll, whoa, 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 whoa. I believe I used the ARP sample. This would be a good time to rename my stuff. So this is calling on instrument three. So let's go ahead and rename that chord. And that's all I need for now. So let's come over here again. What is C? It's pretty loud. We'll fix that. to do something that's just a bad idea no no so it's going that's an interesting idea though. Let's try that. Wow, some dissonance. I heard dissonance in my head. Wow, go figure. Let's keep working on this. And I also want to add, let's add a control T. This one will be, whoa. I do not want it to be a purple track though. Not cool. Control T, we're gonna name it. It's still a purple track. Oh well, this is the base. Bases aren't freaking purple, they're green. So I'm thinking like static bases. It's like puke green. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we are going to call up a base for the base. I have a vision. The vision involves a basic waveform called a. I want to use a, a square wave and I'm going to, it's actually pretty okay for whatever reason, the square wave usually. Oh, never mind, not this particular one. Pitch it up 36 and I'm going to have it lay down the low notes, which I believe one of my parts is already playing some pretty solid low notes. If I scroll all the way over and so this, this one. I'm gonna have to um, fix that guy up, but let's, uh, maybe the bass doesn't need to play that. No, bass needs to play that. So I'm gonna control C those lines and the bass is this one over here. So I'll put those in, but it is not enough. Now I haven't totally figured this out, but this is what I do right now. 
I'm going to swap the instruments from the selection and pattern. I found that just to be the easiest. I've messed around with the pattern in selection. I just have had weird results. Um, so still learning that that part of Renoise. But let's go ahead and they have this awesome instrument swapper. So our source instrument is zero and our destination instrument is nine. So we'll go to nine and we'll hit swap. And it swaps them. And we'll come over here and you can hit swap again. The selections, whoops, not swap. Go down and hit swap again because the selection carries with you from pattern to pattern. So you can just swap really quick like that. That's what I do. I know it's a, there's probably a way that you could just select it here and that'll be really useful if you have a ton of stuff, but I haven't found, I haven't just taken the time to learn that. This might be an octave too high, let's see. Okay, and it's also very loud. It is an octave too high. So let's um, take that down an octave. Oh, you know what? I didn't select the thing. Come on now, shift and down. That's the octave I want. Cool beans, bro, dude, man, dude, bro. And let's turn that off. Yes, yes, bass, man. Okay, so let's... And then the kick will come, because we're going to mix it, right? And the mix will will clean up this relationship. So it'll be like, boom, cha, boom, cha. And it'll be like, oh, yeah, man, it'll sound nice. So. And we are just, we just got started. So it's like, we can't just leave ourselves hanging. Um, let's move the fast tap before the bass. Let's move the bass next to over here. It makes a little more sense for it to be sort of over here-ish. We need more chords, right? So let's add some more chords here. Change our instrument to our chord track. And then we go something like... Let's set up a little loop right here to see how it sounds. So on the pad, uh, I have a great idea. Let's automate the resonance in the cutoff a little bit. So let's uh, say... So right now the resonance is like freaking a low life. It's it's very small. Turn on line automation. Okay, so you can't hear it. But we're not moving the cutoff yet. So wait, let's go. Let's move the cutoff around. So let's say right here. So I try to make this little musical. This uh, this phrase is an interesting, interesting move. I uh, I think it's a lot more dynamic though, and also it provides room. See, moves like this also provide mixing ideals because then you leave room for other stuff to be absorbed absorbed momentarily, and then the listener can go back to listening to like that cool chord line. So it allows, it creates a sense of space. It makes the sound bigger than it is. So, okay. So we have our, our drums and our line in. Now I had an ARP, I believed, that I have not yet included. We 
which is this guy. So let's come down here, add two more patterns. Let's just copy and paste and we'll vary it up. And we'll also introduce our ARP. So control C, control V, because it's the same chords. And we'll also use one of these, one of our nifty reverse symbols we've already made. Oh, we totally didn't go to the next loop. I was like, wow, that was great, but where's the next part? Okay, so the automation carries with the clips, so you can see our, our automation was duplicated. Um, I'm okay with it fading in again, but I want it to be a lot more sudden. I believe we're on a high pass right now too. I do some cleanup here real quick and this comes down, maybe have it do something like that. This isn't really, uh, it's not gonna make a big difference, but uh, that just came from a result of doing the automation right now. Let's vary up the melody here because the same melody two times in a row usually isn't the best idea. So. Whoops, let's go to our melody line and go up two octaves. Okay, let's see. I just heard like a bell. It sounded like a bell would fit really well right there. So this is always, when you get to a part where you have a, a phrase going, you ask yourself, do we want to repeat the phrase or and do some more variation? Or do we want to do a bridge? And then in, in this case, I think I'm going, what I'm going to do is I'm going to clone, I'm going to clone this and then work from there. I tend to do a lot of listening at this stage, trying to come up with unique variations that aren't like stupid. So... Oh, uh, I'm just going to do a listen from back here. Get a, oh, let's do a listen from the beginning and just get a vibe for where I'm at.
Okay, okay, okay. Wait, before before we do that, I, I quite like this. Uh, this is the first time we've really kind of sat down, listened to this part. Um, where is which one am I using for that ARP? This this guy, right? Let's uh toss in. Let's toss in a uh, a C A three seven and um, Control C Control P and then I'm gonna do a fade in. So I'm gonna start at volume zero, and this is a per line command. So the volume will immediately be updated to the next to back to full volume if I don't give it another command. We're gonna go to eighty. And I'm going to select this whole thing. And then I'm going to hit Control I for interpolate. So now, let's see how that sounds. Maybe this isn't the right track to do that on. Or maybe this just needs to be up an octave. Whoops. That's not an octave. Oh my gosh, so annoying. Sometimes selecting patterns. Okay, let's try a different. Let's try a different note. Let's um. Nope. Nope. Oh well. Oh, you know what? Let's uh, let's combine it. I'm gonna add a new effect column. Uh, by holding control shift over and I'm going to put a a down command a, a meaning pitch down by one and let's move these commands over to the saw category so the pad control x control v. Off. Gotta put the off commands. Hmm. This is also, I gotta keep in mind what this will do to my mix later. Because mixing this, I'd have to come and automate stuff. Um, let's try. Whoops. Let's try one more octave down. I want there to be another delay, especially for this part specifically. So I'm going to add a delay. I'm just going to go with a regular delay. Make it longer. Maybe even longer. Increase the feedbacks too. And on this delay, I'm going to automate it on and off. So this is delay two. So I'm going to go to delay two, activate bypass. This is pattern six, which is, as you can see, very short. It's going to be off at the very beginning. I just put it at the beginning just to be absolutely safe. On, 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 and then off eight uh, for further use of this track for whatever I'm going to use it for. I'm going to put a couple more here just to I don't know. All 
Let's get some context. There's gotta be a way, why isn't it ringing out more? Do I turn it off immediately? It shouldn't affect it though, that, oh, that off command's way over there. Let's go to the feedback. Turn it way up. So I'm gonna turn the feedbacks down over time. That should overcome our problem. Is it these off commands? I hope not. It works except for when I, when it's playing in the track. All right, let's try a new, let's try A37. I don't know. I'll figure that out some other time, probably in the next stage. I might even do it off screen because I'm a, I'm not gonna sit here and try and figure that out. But anyways, you get the idea. It's go and we'll we'll put the thing in there. You know what? I think we'll let it ring out as a solo melody here. Da, na, na, na. Is it a flat? Yeah, that'll work out. 
G sharp. This is the parts where I just don't explain stuff because it's like, I, I I try to explain what I'm doing. I I just basically I'm looking at the theory. I'm considering how particular relationships will work out in my head, considering the notes that I'm using, and then thinking of something in my head that would work pretty well, and then writing that down, and then going through and picking out the stuff that bothers me. So here, I also want to move um, the fifth. So do a full display, fifth band. We're going to automate this guy to go. I think I might let the melody just continue to do what it was doing. I'm going to have to bring this out in the mix too, um, but that's fine. Oh, where are those? Where's that pad? Silence that. That's pretty cool. I like the variation with the ARPs coming in on the second parts. That's cool. So let's um, do some more automation on the filter because you see our filter movements are exactly the same. And we can make some room for our new idea here. And that'll be our out, so we'll exit our crazy pattern here. So um, let's listen at the transitions here. I might I might do some of the stuff off screen just because it's just so easy. It's not like there's not a terrible lot going on. It's just a lot of trial and error. This, I am thinking it would be cool to add a reverb and bring the wet mix up at those parts with a, a lengthier decay, um, which would add mud, but it's like a kind of mud that I would be okay with.
whoops. And then we will add our break there. Okay. For whatever reason, the magic riser thing with the note off commands that defy me in my pattern commands. I don't even know. I don't know what I'm even saying anymore. This is a this is a song with a, a lot more automation than I anticipated doing. But uh, that's just kind of what happens when you want to make something sound dynamic. It's got to change over time. So see the drums, got the drums knocked out. And I think this is pretty grooving. We may, I think it would be cool. Maybe not that. We might just go to a whole new, a combination of this idea only varied up better. And so we'll put, we'll put a break here and put a bridge. And then we'll vary that idea. Hey, all right, this is it. So this is gonna be our playthrough. Um, this is the preview and we're just gonna play through. I'm gonna show you what we have. We're not done yet. Obviously have work to do, things to do, but I think we've reached a pretty nice uh, spot. Uh, this section right at the riser, the fill here, um, it cuts out suddenly, not figured out why, but I, I decided to just move on and we will figure it out another day. So without further ado, here's the playthrough of what we accomplished in this video. Okay, so that's where we're stopping. That's the end. But a really quick note, uh, there was a note that held over that wasn't supposed to. I want to add in that hat line right here, and I'm going to automate it real fast. So that's something I'm going to do right now. And, oh, that's the wrong hat. Which hat do I want? I want the fast hat. I want this hat. Okay, I want to automate that on over time. There was a note that carried over, was not supposed to carry over. Figure it out later. And then the bridge, I was thinking maybe we could just do a repeat thing and then bring it back into the drop. And then that could be our track. It'd be pretty simple, easy, um, nice groove. Uh, so over here, I wanted to do the hat. And on the hat, I wanted to go from 80 to... I wanted to do this via a filter, though. So let's add a filter. Filter real quick. And automate it. Off. On. And... That's pretty cool. Let's try it one more time. And then, yeah, I don't know where that note was that carried over. But anyways, that was the preview. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, let me know. Subscribe and have a blessed day.